The Cravey CNC is sponsored by DesignSpark. Check out the full project at the link in the video description. My current electrical setup is very much temporary. I expect much of this will change with time as I upgrade and discover new things about the CNC. So don't take this as a guide on how to wire a CNC, but for reference, I'll gloss through my connections really quickly. For power, I have a power socket connected to a solid state relay. The relay is controlled by a pin on the ESP32 board. AC goes from the SSR to two 24 volts switching power supplies, as well as the spindles power supply. The large power supply powers the stepper motor drivers, as well as two step down converters. One of the converters is set to 12 volts to power the cooling fan or an LED strip down the line. The second buck converter is set to 5 volts to power the ESP32. The second power supply will be used to power the vacuum motor that will be installed later as part of the dust collection system. The power supply is connected to a much more powerful step-down converter and from there to a tiny MOSFET module. The module is connected to a PWM pin on the ESP32 so I'll be able to control the dust collector from Marlin. I also have a little LiPo battery and LiPo charging module connected. I figured I would need a backup to power the ESP32 when the main power supply is off. The rest of the connections are the step and direction signals for controlling the stepper drivers, as well as connections for the limit switches. The essentials are wired up now, so let me show you how I brought up the CNC. The first problem I have to solve is with the remote controller. The OLED display stopped working after I installed the control board on the CNC. I know it's a signal problem relating to the length of the cable connecting the OLED display to the control board because the OLED screen works just fine when I connect it with a short cable. To fix the problem, I replaced the I2C wires with a coaxial cable, which worked out fine as you can see from the OLED screen now working as it should. Everything is all wired up now. I've set the voltage levels on all three bulk converters, 12 volts for the fan, 5 volts for the ESP32 and, and 15 volts for the vacuum motor. I've also set the current limits on the stepper drivers to 1.5 amps and that's for the X, Y and the Z. The NEMA 23 stepper motors can handle up to 2.8 amps. 
but I figured 1.5 amps is a good place to start. I have powered up the system and I'm happy to report there was no magic smoke, so it seems the wiring is fine. But I do have good news and bad news. The first good news is I can control the power from Marlin. So if I go to switch power on, you can see the power for the system came on and I can turn it off as well. So that works, that works well, easy enough. The second good news is we have movement on the CNC. First, I'll turn on the power. Now to motion, move axis. Let's start with, let's start with the X axis. So move by one millimeter. So let's watch. So there you can see the x-axis is moving and in the right direction too. Let's switch to the y-axis and now the y-axis a bit difficult to see. I'm only moving one millimeter at a time, just um, just to be safe for now. But you can clearly see it move. The y-axis is moving in the wrong direction, but I'll fix that later in Marlin. Let's switch to the z-axis. So the z-axis moves as well. So we do have movement on all axes, which is pretty exciting. I've also checked the limit switches and I can confirm the work as well. So if I do M119, you can see the states of the switches. Um, so that's it for the good news. Now for the bad, the first problem I'm having is with the OLED screen. I thought the coaxial cable fixed um, the problem, but, but I'm still having signal issues. So if I move any of the axes, let me do X. Just watch what happens to the screen. You can see it's frozen already and now it's blank. Now it's gone off. So it's been misbehaving like this whenever I move any of the axes. So I'm definitely still having signal issues with the I squared C lines to the OLED screen. Now the second and the biggest problem I'm currently facing is I'm unable to own any of the axes on the CNC. And I think that's because there is noise on the limit switch lines. Let me show you what happens when I try to own any of the axes. See, it just stops or more accurately it's reading a false signal from the limit switch so it stops before it gets to the home position let me try that again so you can see what's going on so let me do x again you can see it just stopped and according to repetitive host it's telling me the axis successfully owned which is obviously false let's try the y axis same thing it just moves a bit and it stops and if i go back to repetitive host it tells me why is also at the zero position which is again obviously wrong the same happens with the z axis so i think what's going on is the noise from the stepper drivers is affecting the limit switch lines i think that might also be the problem with the oled screen so i definitely need to clean up the signals on the controller board for the OLED screen, I think a lower value pull-up resistor on the SDK and SDA lines should fix the problem. I'm not sure, but I'll try that. And for the limit switches, I need to put in some decoupling capacitors. And I also want to find a way to provide a solid ground plane for the controller board. So hopefully all those modifications will fix all the issues I'm currently having with this controller board. 
to be fair, considering how the controller board was soldered, okay. it's no wonder I'm having noise issues. Anyways, I'm going to take the board out and put in those modifications and hopefully we'll end up with a reliable controller board. I have now reinstalled the board, um, we connected all the cables and we can try ohming the CNC again. So I'm going to try and ohm the x-axis first. Wrong, it's going the wrong way. Turn off. Mm. So I'm not sure what went wrong. I did flip the direction of the y-axis in Marlin, so I'm guessing that's where the problem is. Um, given that this is a core XY system, I'm pretty sure the direction for X and Y should be the same. So if I was to change any direction, both the X and the Y needs to be changed. So I'm going to change X to true as well. And then we can try this again. Right, so I've updated the firmware. Let's try this again. So I'm going to try to ohm the X axis again. Going in the wrong direction again. What's going on? Okay, I think I'm just going to confirm that the X and the Y axis are moving in the right direction from the controller first before trying to ohm again. So let me just turn power on again. Motion. No, 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 no. Okay, the x-axis seems to be moving in the wrong direction. And now the y-axis. Also, no, actually the, the y-axis is moving in the right direction. Hmm. I think I'm messing something up in Marlin, so I should probably just look through the configuration again. So I fixed the direction problem. Turns out I just had to switch the X and Y cables, which in this case is actually A and B since, um, since this is a core XY system. Anyways, um, I have the axis moving in the right direction. So we can try ohming the axis again. So I'm going to start with X again. Yes, it's going in the right direction. So. I'm just going to put my hand on the power button just in case. Nice. Let's try the Y axis this time. Um, okay, also moving in the right direction. So I, I still have my hand on the power button. That didn't work at all. Oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> Trouble, trouble, trouble. I mean, you can obviously see what the problem is. Almost. Just almost. I obviously knew this was a problem when I was designing this um, homing part here. But I must have messed up the dimensions. And now we don't have an homing Y axis. We can still try the Z axis for now. I'll have to adjust this part and then reprint it. Let's try homing the Z axis. This is making me extremely nervous because I'm currently far from the power switch. Okay, let's just try it. Okay, moving in the right direction. No, 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 no. What's that? There's nothing physically wrong with the Z axis, but I think the current on the stepper motor might not be quite enough. I guess I'll just increase the current to the Z motor and then we can try again. Okay, not so much. 
Let's try to home again. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Let me just try it again. Okay. Nice. Obviously, the limit switch noise is no longer a problem and we can ohm the X axis and the Z axis. I still need to reprint that part before we can try to ohm all axes. And I'm still having problems with the OLED screen. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit better. It's normally to just go off after I move any of the axes, but it's still on now. Although it's, it's still misbehaving as you can see. So I think I still need to take this board out and then further reduce the pull up on the SCK and SDA lines. So I'll just get to that and then we can try this again. So I've now glued the additional piece to the Y-axis ohming part. So hopefully we should now be able to ohm the Y-axis. I already have the controller connected to Repetia O. So I'll just ohm the Y-axis. That was quick. <laughs> and we have a successful Y-axis ohming. Let me do that again. I think I'm going to move it back a little. Okay. And then on the Y axis again. Nice. 